Thank you for listening to Buffalo What's Next on WBFO. Buffalo What's Next is on summer break and will return with new content shortly. As we take this break, please continue to tune in to WBFO Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. for producers' picks of some of our favorite episodes of Buffalo What's Next. How can we afford not to talk about race? About education. About segregation. About humanity. Since the dawn of this nation, racial violence has existed. The way we have designed our society has a big hand in what occurred in that Topps market. The suburban area everywhere, we must work and teach our children. We need to make sure that we put more funding in our programs that help prevent gun violence and more money into art. If we're going to have some real healing. We've got to have space to tell some uncomfortable truths. On today's episode of Buffalo What's Next, Summertime Producers Picks, we look back at two segments from two previous episodes. Thomas Nell White sits down with Key Bank Branch Manager Rob Cornelius. The two talk about business and community needs on the east side of Buffalo from October 11th of last year. Then, Thomas speaks improving the community through land and home ownership with Buffalo Information and Share Cooperative founder Ahmed Naviz from September 20th of last year. First, Thomas with Key Bank Branch Manager Rob Cornelius. Rob, thank you for being here with us today. How are you? Oh, man, I'm great. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. All right. The mass shooting on 514 revealed to the rest of the country and maybe some people in other people in Western New York, some of the inequities plaguing underserved areas of the city of Buffalo. You're in a, in a unique position to talk about banking, business and community needs. Can you tell me a little bit about your work as branch manager at Key Bank? Oh, man, that's a, that's a good question. I'm branch manager at Key Bank Downtown Medical Campus. If you're familiar with the medical corridor, we're right there inside the Conventus, right next door to Buffalo General and Children's Hospital. Um, my biggest thing that I love to do as a branch manager is small business and helping our small businesses grow and educating our small businesses on the things they need to, the things they need to be successful. What are some of the problems related to banking in 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 the black community education a lot of us a lot of our black community are not educated on banking a lot of them want to keep money under the mattress or money in the safe you know their credit scores are not the, they want to drive the most fanciest car but the credit scores are not together and a lot of people don't understand credit you know credit is the number one thing that moves america you know credit is not a race thing Credit is a thing that if you don't have it, you're going to be behind the eight ball for a long time until you get it together. So I feel it's my job to empower and educate the community on credit, on small business, on how to open up your first business, on how to own your first home. From your perspective, is is the Community Reinvestment Act working as it should? Actually, it is. Actually, it is. You know, I see a lot of things going on behind closed doors that the community don't see. Community Community, they want instant grits. They don't want the grits to be, they don't want the grits your, your grandma used to make that takes about a half hour. They want the instant grits. They want they they want a bill to pass on Monday and they want to see change on Tuesday. And that's not mm-hmm. the way things happen. You know, but if you look up and down Jefferson, things have changed on Jefferson. Things are changing on Main Street. Things are changing on Fillmore. You know, things are changing around the medical corridor. If you look at if you look at our city real good. Things are changing. We just have to embrace the change that's coming to our community. So what you tell people is to have a little bit of patience and things will, exactly. good things will come? Exactly. And again, you're listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White here with Key Bank branch manager Rob Cornelius. You are at the Delvin Grider Community Center for President Biden's speech to Western New York in the immediate aftermath of the shooting. I know because I saw you there and we spoke. What were your thoughts on his speech that day? You know, for one, I'm going to be honest. I never met a president a day in my life. So to be there in that atmosphere, in that room, but for him to take the time out to come to our city, you know, to embrace these families. Because what people don't know behind closed doors, a good friend of mine, Wayne, he lost his mom, Miss Cheney, that day. And so to hear Wayne's feedback from not what the speech was, but what President Biden sat down with them individually, one at a time, and poured into them. And then the follow up of bringing them back to the White House, just I think last month, bringing the families back to the White House. You know, I tip my hat to President Biden. Some things we don't agree with with our president, but on this one, he got it right. You know, this one, he came to our city when we needed him most. 
And I think he got this one right. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that, with just his his presence there. And obviously I wasn't there when he was speaking to the families, but the, the address he gave to the people of Western New York uh, was really, was really uh, heartfelt. Yes. And I want to, I want to, jump over to your work as a small business owner entrepreneurship again you're a small business owner how did you get your foot in the door i'll be honest um this has been if you talk to my mom she'll tell you that we grew up in the town gardens it was a little utility clause i used to call my office when i was a kid and i totally forgot about that till my mom had to remind me of that I always wanted to be a businessman. I was either going to be a basketball player, but I stopped growing at 6'2", or a business <laughs> owner. But the business that God led me to was not the business I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a clothing store or something like that. But he led me into a business, RC Enterprise, which to help my community. You know, with RC Enterprise, my wife and I, we done done multiple backpack giveaways, food drives. Um, actually, too, I assist Conway the Machine with Conway Cares to make sure that he get Conway Cares off the ground and make things run smooth there with, you know, himself and also Toya. You know, so I really stumbled into it. Like, I thought I was going to be this big-time, you know, department store owner or, or a big-time promoter. But, you know, God moved me in a totally different direction to what I wanted to do. And best believe we will we will talk a little bit about uh, Conway the Machine and the Griselda guys later. Um, and as, as someone who has found success in the business sector, what what is something you would tell an aspiring entrepreneur uh, looking to start a business within the city? Um, do your research on location for one. Let your business be your passion because if you're if you're doing your business just to get a quick buck and it's not your passion, your business is gonna fail. You know, do your research, get your books together. But get a strong team behind you. You know, no one no one is successful without a strong team. Can you talk a little bit about your team? Um, you know what? Honestly, people think my team is this huge team. But when I sit down at the table, it's my wife and it's my daughter. You know, IRC Enterprise, that's what it consists of. You know, we sit there, we get things together. You know, we come up with a plan. And trust me, I come up with a million ideals and they're like, uh, that's, that might not be the one that we want to roll with this time. You know, <laughs> my wife recently had to tell me, pump your brakes on the ideal that I had, you know, for December. She's like, that's not going to happen this year. Mm-hmm. You know, and I kind of had to take a step back. That's like uh, me and my sister when I when I present a new pair, a new article of clothing that I want to wear. She's like, Thomas, no. <laughs> that's how they treat us yes yeah. <laughs> but it's for the best <laughs> um what what's to be done to get more minority and women-owned businesses into these areas especially uh these east side corridors that you spoke of before uh, bailey jefferson um fillmore um uh, sustainable businesses they have to want to go there you know a lot of people want to go where there's heavy traffic you know, Hurdle was heavy traffic. You know, Elmwood is heavy traffic. Main Street, heavy traffic. They want to go where it's heavy traffic, but not knowing if you ever drove down Bailey from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock is bumper to bumper. You know, it's heavy traffic. And this business on Bailey that's growing and sustaining. King City has been there for years mm-hmm. and not going out of business at all. So his business is on Bailey, but they have to want to go there first. But the city has to make it enticing for them to go there. Like, it needs some cleanup in those areas. You know, if they get some cleanup in those areas and make those streets look like the Elmwoods, look like the Hurdles. You're talking infrastructure? Infrastructure, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, if they clean it up and, you know, they get, you know, some of the things together over there, I think business owners would love to go there. What are some obstacles to running a successful business? Uh, yourself. How so? A lot of people, they want to be a business owner. They want to run a business, but they get in their own way. Everything in this world is obtainable. You know, first things first, everything is obtainable in this world. Um, but you have to have the motivation to go get it. You know, never, ever. My wife got My wife got this thing. You can cry about it today, but you get it together tomorrow. You know? You have to pull them up by the bootstraps, and if it's an obstacle in your way, this way, 
you got to find a way to get around that obstacle and make your business successful. Never let anyone slow you down. You know, you look at Jay-Z. He came from the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at how he came up. He didn't let nothing stop him from being a billionaire. He went around every obstacle. Was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. But he did not get in his own way. He found another way to make it happen. He had to work in a lot of circles that weren't available maybe to him yes. or other or other rap oriented business business owners. Mm -hmm. So he had to he broke the mold. Exactly. Or you look at our former president, President Obama. You know, it wasn't easy for Obama to be president. It wasn't easy for a black man to be a senator or a president, but he made it look good. He made it look easy, but he he let our younger generation know that, hey, you can be this, too. Talk to me about like like moving in those spaces like there's got to be like an attitude towards it. There's got to be a look. You're, you're in a suit right now. Like you, you're coming in. You are dressed to the nines. There's there's got to be like an attitude you have to have and a look that goes with it to move in these spaces. And if you're not sitting at these tables, you're creating the table for yourself. Yes. Um, it's a confidence. It's, I've been confident my whole life. Even when I was at my lowest point, I was confident. When you walk in these rooms, you have to be confident, but you have to be knowledgeable of what you're talking about. Because one thing, you can get in front of the right people. Once you're in front of those people, you have to know what you're saying. You have to know how to put yourself in position. Then you have to know when to listen. Because sometimes in a room, you can be in a room with, with millionaires and you just sit there and soak it all up. We'll be back with more Buffalo What's Next after this. Are you looking for a rewarding career in public media? Visit WNED.org slash careers to learn more about becoming a part of a talented team dedicated to making a difference in our communities. Employees at Buffalo Toronto Public Media enjoy a variety of outstanding benefits. We are located in downtown Buffalo and we have free parking. We are focused on inclusivity and belonging. Come as you are and apply today. Visit WNED.org slash careers. The warrior tradition tells the inspiring, heartbreaking, and largely untold story of Native Americans in the U.S. military. Why would indigenous men and women put their lives on the line for the very government that took their homelands? A lot of people ask, why did you join the white man's war? This is our home. This has always been our home. And part of the commitment to protecting and defending your home led to military service. Hear stories of service and pain, of courage and fear in the warrior tradition, now streaming on YouTube. I'm Kraus Schallhorn with Mindful Music. Join me for thoughtful and in-depth conversation with my many different guests from around the region and the world as they discuss how music helps and heals in times of stress and everyday life. Listen to Mindful Music Saturdays at 4 p.m. right here on WBFO, your NPR station. This is Buffalo What's Next, where we have conversations with the community about moving forward. To have your voice heard, press the Talk to Us button on the WBFO app, and we'll work to get your questions and comments on the air. Join us on Twitter at WBFO or email us at news at WBFO.org. Together, we'll have the conversations that are needed. This is WBFO, your NPR station. You're listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White here with business owner and key bank branch manager, Rob Cornelius. Rob, talk to me about the community work you do. I know it's a very special thing to you. You've done more than a few things this summer, including a basketball tournament, Shea Day, in honor of the late, great DJ Shea. Real quick, are you a part of that billboard? Did you put that billboard up on, on the Kensington? That says, long live DJ Shay. I can't take credit for that. That was all um, Benny and City Boy. That was all BSF doing that. All right. All right. Um, drum work music festival, numerous food and clothing drives. How does it feel to be able to bring these events to the community? You know what's funny? It, it, it feels surreal to me because where I come from, like I told you, I come from the town gardens. And if anybody in Buffalo knows about the town gardens, it's mm -hmm. one of the most poverty poverty stricken areas in the city 
Um, but my mom got us out of there when I was 18. I went away to college. She moved. She bought, you know, they got a home and they moved. So it feels really great to do this because if you can't give back, you've been blessed and you can't give back and be a blessing. It's a problem. You have to be a blessing. And I would be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention your affiliation with Conway the Machine, Benny the Butcher, West Side Gun, known as Griselda. They're, they too are always giving back to the community, um, even before 514. Uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about their local impact? I mean, they're, they're known across the globe, but they're Buffalo boys. They got their start here. Talk to me about them, please. Um, for one, let me give props where props is due. Let me give props to my god brother, the late great DJ Shea, who mm-hmm. put all those guys together. But um, I can speak on Conway. Conway has a heart of gold. You know, when you listen to his music, but then you see him in action, a lot of things we did with Conway Care as far as feeding the homeless, as far as taking care of the young lady who had Bell's palsy, you know, as far as giving Thanksgiving meals out, as far as him actually giving money to people in need and paying for funerals and taking care of weddings and taking care of other people's bills off the kindness of his heart. That's him. You know, I'm just there to, to be a vessel to help him do it, you know, but, and, um, and then Benny has a really love for his city too. You know, Benny don't advertise a lot of things that he do, but he's very active in the city. If you look at a little league football team, it's called Buffalo kids. Everybody in the country know that's West side gun, but West side also gives back to the um, city of Buffalo a lot. So these guys, their heart is in Buffalo. No matter where they're at in this globe, their heart is right here in Buffalo. And they all have a heart of gold. Do you give them your perspective on things, on how to do, how to, how to, how to give back to the community, words of advice, words of wisdom? How does that, how does that go? Um, Conway, yes. Me and Conway, you know, Conway, that's my guy. You know, and, and it's not really advice. We just knock ideas off each other. You know, when it's time for a community event, you know, he'll come up and say, hey, this is what I want to do. Or I saw this in the paper. What can we do to help? And then we brainstorm from there. DJ Shea. Legend. Legend. Legend in this area. Talk about his impact on Buffalo's hip hop scene. Because I couldn't, I can't, I can't not do this without talking a little bit more about hip hop and, and the legends in this area. I'm going to tell you, it would not be no Griselda if it wasn't for the late, great DJ Shea. This Buffalo hip-hop scene would not be what it is. You got to realize you got people like DJ Premier shouting him out. You got people, you know, the, the, the greats. You got the Busta Rhymes and all those guys, you know, when Shea passed, it was a lot of emails and text messages came through the chain from big-time celebrities. You know, DJ Shea is the pillar, you know, when it comes to Buffalo hip-hop. Even though he's not here in the physical, he's here. He's here in the spiritual. If you see the way Westside, Conway, City Boy, you know, Benny, you see the way they're moving right now. Because I can't forget City Boy because City Boy was actually up under Shea and learned the business. So if you see all the BSF clothing, that's City Boy. But that's okay. all Shea's influence. You know, Shea actually laid the groundwork. You know, so he made it, you know, he made it easy for guys. He laid the groundwork. You know, Shea was, was the big homie. How do you continue his legacy in the um, years to come? You know, Shay has a son, Dominic, and he has a daughter, Shamir, and he has a grandson. My job is just to be there for them now, you know, to make sure they good, you know. But Shay's legacy, just look at any, um, any Griselda show, any one of the guys. You know, his legacy is living on. You know, when you, when you, when you listen to the radio, you hear the beats. You know, you hear 18-wheeler, mm-hmm. you know, Shay Legacy lives on. If if you listen to um any of the Conway CDs, you know, you listen to Forever Dropping Tears, he poured his heart out to to that song. You know, Shay's legacy is gonna live on regardless. You're listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White, here with business owner, key bank, bank man bank manager, branch manager, excuse me, Rob Cornelius. I wanted to circle back to just development along the east side corridors you say it's a it's a it's we need to practice patience with with this growth and development 
But where do you see those? Where do you see those corridors in five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years? Let's put it this way: Northland Court, Northland Workforce, was not the way it was five years ago. That was a vacant building. Um, if you look at medical campus where Key Bank is, you know right now, I say about ten years ago that was, that wasn't there. You know, things are happening. Things are turning around. You know, if you see any vacant lots in the city in about five years, all these vacant lots is going to have something. It's going to be a prospering business in these lots in the city of Buffalo. Um, I can see Bailey Avenue looking like a Hurdle Avenue in the next five years. I can see Fillmore looking like that. I can see Jefferson looking like the Jefferson of old, you know, with, you know, and I can see our east side with more than one grocery store. Yeah. You know, that's, that's disturbed me when. When, when, when the massacre happened at Tops, that we only had one grocery store on the east side. And our elderly had to, you know, get get to North Buffalo or get, you know, way down Broadway or something like that just to get groceries. Mm-hmm. That was disturbing. When I grew up, it was a super duper in the Town Garden Plaza. It was a grocery store here. It was a, it was a super duper at Tops. Or something it was all around our city. Now it's only one for the whole east side, which is very disturbing. But I see that's about to change. Do you what what are your feelings on the Tops market reopening? Put it this way, we can't let them win. You know, by closing Tops, we're letting them win. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about if you close Tops, what good would that do for that community? You think about what good would that do for people that's employed there, for the jobs that Tops bring there, for the for the things that Tops supplies for that community. You know, we we can't let them win. Because what 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 happened is they want our businesses to close on our communities. So if that happened and we let them win, that means that whole community is suffering. You got people all the way from Bailey Avenue, you know, to Fillmore, to Cold Springs, to downtown that goes there to shop. So we can't get we can't give them that leverage. And are you in favor of more grocery stores, markets, in the East Side? Because the East Side is so vast yes so one you know one supermarket hey it's great but you know there should maybe there should be more there's got to be more access you know, i live in north buffalo and this is what i see i have dashes i have tops i have wegmans i have price right and i have um audis five grocery stores is in north buffalo alone you go to the east side of buffalo it's one that's a problem to me that's a, that's a huge problem. We we need a lot more than one. You know, our Bailey Avenue residents needs a grocery store. Our downtown residents needs a grocery store. We need more than one grocery store on the east side of Buffalo. Period. How do we get that? How do we get that ball rolling? We we talk to local officials, state officials. How do we? How do we? How do we put that pressure on them to to? You know, talk to these grocers. Put a Wegmans in this area. Put a Aldi. How do we do that? I think it's about to happen. I think Tops kind of open up the city eyes. Because before when Tops is there, it's like, oh, my God, we have Tops. This is perfect. But when it had to close, it opened up their eyes. That this is not perfect. We need more than one. You know, if, if you think about it, you know, every community has multiple grocery stores. Amherst has multiple grocery stores. Mm-hmm. But we don't in, our, in the east side of Buffalo. And that's a huge problem. But we need to get to the city officials and let them know. What are we doing about putting something in these in these areas? You know, Town Garden Plaza is empty. Yep. You know, I I, I drive down there often. It's empty. It's it's room for a grocery store. If you can't get a Wegmans, it's room for it's room for an Audi's or a Price Right down there. But if you're not making the moves to talk to these owners to get it down there, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last thing I want to ask you something I ask all my guests. It's a very broad question. Just, but from your point of view, what does Buffalo need? Buffalo need unity. You know, Buffalo is one of the most segregated towns in America. I spent 10 years down south in Macon, Georgia, and they were more together than Buffalo was. And that was a problem with me. Buffalo definitely need unity. The business owners need unity and the people need unity. If we get unity, you think the only time we, we, we're unified is at a Bills game. At a Bills game, you know, there is no hate there. You know, so if we get unity in Buffalo, can you can you just imagine how much our city will really grow? 
But how do we get to that? How do we get that unity? Is it is it a coming together of one person at a time? One person at a time. One person at a time. You know, when we stop looking at color and we stop looking at gender and we stop looking at some of these things that and we put our blindfolds on, we just start looking at the person. Because if I cut myself and I cut someone else, it's all red. Mm -hmm. You know, so one person at a time. That's the way we get it done. You are listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White, here with KeyBank branch manager Rob Cornelius. Rob, I want to thank you again for being here. We'll be back with more Buffalo What's Next after this. Our region is home to some of the finest communities in the world. Explore them through the Our Town series produced by WNED PBS, but captured by community members on the Buffalo Toronto Public Media YouTube channel today. WNED Classical has been conducting interviews of their own on YouTube with the classical music community. Have you ever wondered what goes into the performances you hear on WNED Classical? Head on over to our Buffalo Toronto Public Media YouTube page to see the collection of interviews that we've orchestrated. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. This is Buffalo What's Next, where we have conversations with the community about moving forward. To have your voice heard, press the Talk to Us button on the WBFO app, and we'll work to get your questions and comments on the air. Join us on Twitter at WBFO or email us at news at WBFO.org. Together, we'll have the conversations that are needed. This is WBFO, your NPR station. Next, Thomas with Buffalo Information and Sharing Cooperative founder, Ahmed Navis. Today, we are talking improving the community through land and home ownership with Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative founder, Ahmad Nieves, and his brother, Ayat Nieves. Uh, Ahmad and uh, Ayat, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Talk to us about your business, Ahmad. Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative. Information is the key word here. Yep. Um, so a few years ago, um, I started up this group. It's called... Um, it's actually Buffalo Information Sharing Collective. Uh, it's... Um, it's a group of loosely formed individuals, and we do workshops about uh, real estate, anything financial, and we just, uh, these are free workshops where we believe information is a key, and we want to help inform the community so that they can make uh, the best decisions for their life. I was reading this interview you did with Buffalo Spree and the uh, incomparable Nanette Massey, you talk about your tar target audience, uh, people who are working hard, but maybe uh, do not want or are sick of nine to five jobs. Uh, they're just looking for an opportunity. What can you provide for them? I feel like there's a lot of ways that people can improve their lives. And a lot of that has to do with information. And there's just so much information out there that it's hard to distinguish like what's good information, what's bad information. And there's also information that's in our face that we just don't know what's there. So uh, I started talking about the City of Buffalo auction, uh, how regular people could uh, engage at the auction and make better decisions um, and just and just go from there and build forward. How do you differentiate between good information, bad information, misleading information? I think experience is key. So um, when I do these workshops, if I'm not presenting, I choose somebody who has experience in this field, like real life experience, uh, not just someone who read about it or who you know took some classes about it, but someone who's done it and done it successfully. That's that's what's key is experience. Um, you're also quoted in the piece as saying that too many people are information hoarders. How is that a problem? How can it be solved? Um, the deciding factor for a lot of people um, is is information so a lot of people when they get good information they don't want other people to be competitive against them because they operate in the sense that if this person's successful i'm gonna be less successful and i don't really operate in that sense i believe that we could be successful all together as a community so when i have good information i like to share it with other people in the hopes that if they have good information they share it back so i believe we should all be sharing information and grow together. 
sort of like a uh, rising tide lift all lifts all boats theory. Yes, exactly. We'll be back with more Buffalo What's Next after this. Watch Buffalo's Voices of Steel on YouTube. The original WNED PBS production captures the legacy of the steel industry in western New York through the voices of the people who worked in the mills. Anybody who never saw the steel plant in operation missed something. I always told my kids that. They really missed to see what it was like to make steel. Through remembrances of the workers, Buffalo's Voices of Steel showcases the pride western New York still feels about its steel producing past. Watch it now on the Buffalo Toronto Public Media YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Not sure what you want to watch tonight? We've got you covered. Visit WNED.org slash TV schedule to see what's on WNED PBS, WNED Create, and WNED PBS Kids. Click the primetime button to see what's on tonight. You can also search for your favorite programs in the search bar or look for programs by date and time. Visit WNED.org slash TV schedule and start making your viewing plans now. Buffalo Toronto Public Media's unique and valued programming on WNED-PBS, WNED Classical, and WBFO make us a perfect partner for any company interested in making a real difference in our community. Your support has the power to associate your business with one of the most trusted brands in North America. Call me, Sylvia Bennett, to find out how you can make a difference. 716-845-7005. This is Buffalo What's Next, where we have conversations with the community about moving forward. To have your voice heard, press the Talk to Us button on the WBFO app, and we'll work to get your questions and comments on the air. Join us on Twitter at WBFO or email us at news at WBFO.org. Together, we'll have the conversations that are needed. This is WBFO, your NPR station. You're listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm here with Ahmad and Ayat Nieves. Um, this wasn't quite the career you envisioned when you graduated college. What did you have in mind as a career uh, and what led you to create uh, BISC? Um, originally, I dreamt of either having a career in the nonprofit world or being um, a teacher. And after years, uh, after I graduated in w years of working in the nonprofit world, I felt like a lot of them were ineffectual or just greatly overstated their importance in the world. And I was, first of all, I wasn't making that much money in the nonprofit world. I was stressed out. I felt a lot of the people were insincere people. And I felt like a lot of them were perpetuating the problems that they were claiming to fix. So I got burned on the nonprofit world. Um, there's not really one that I've worked at that I could say is that great. And that's not a diss to them. That's just a uh, true feeling. So the reason I created, um, uh, Buffalo Information Sharing Collective is because I had a vision of what I wanted to see in the world and I wasn't seeing it in my community. So I was like, if it's not there, I'm not seeing it. I'll do it. I want to circle back to working for nonprofits in a second. Um, but <laughs> coming from me, coming from a, a teaching family, my brother is a teacher and my mom was a teacher. What led you away from teaching? Oh my God. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I grad I graduated college. I got into the school system. I started like substitute teaching and just working with these kids and seeing these kids and like, all the things that they go through with their family life, it was just too much. And, you know, I was, uh, I know some people are going to be mad at me for saying this, but I, I started looking at other teachers and, you know, same age as me. And I'm like, how long have you been teaching? They're like, three years. And I'm like, God, I was like, this person's like 26. And, you know, she looks like she's 35. They, they <laughs> like a lot of these teachers, they just look old and bad. And that's not an insult to them. It's just but it takes a toll on you. It's oh, they look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, you know, you know. She's you know, she's like thirty two. She looks like she's fifty. <laughs> but, um, but what? What? Uh, 
I wanna, I wanna, <laughs> since my since my brother is a teacher, there is an importance though that you've probably you probably recognize about uh, having a person that looks like yourself. Yeah. In a position like that. No, it's it's very important. Um, and I commend the people who go out there and do it. Um, you know, there's some schools like, like. Uh, I still sub to this day every now and then, and there's some schools I go in, and you know there'll be young African American children, and the eyes light up. They're like, oh, because they they they, they haven't see you. Yeah, they they Your see present. me. I'm mm-hmm. I'm a black male. They see me. They're excited. Maybe they don't have a black male in their life, or maybe they don't see that many of them, and they're excited. And you know they'll come up, they'll give me a hug. They just they just saw me. You know I've even gone to some schools, and at first it was funny to me. Uh, the teacher would be, would be like. Hey, we got a treat today, and I'm like, "What are they talking about?" They're like, "We got a black person." I was just like, "Oh, <laughs> oh man!" But oh, my. they didn't mean it with you know in a bad way, so I understood what they meant. Um, getting back to nonprofits, you know, you uh, you've worked for a number of local nonprofits, in- including Push Buffalo and others. Um, what have you learned from those places that has helped you in your growth and your development? I. I've learned a lot of people go out there with this positive can-do attitude, and they grossly underestimate the problems that they're trying to fix. So they think if we just do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, we'll fix their problems, but they don't see all these underlying factors. Can you give me an example? Um, sure. Um, so when I was working at PUSH, um, one of the things I did is workforce development, and they believed if we just provide opportunities to to people to get good paying jobs that this would solve you know this issue but a lot of people and it seems like common sense to us is like a lot of people don't understand if you got a job at nine to five you have to be there at nine and a lot of people are just like they don't understand that or they don't get it so they'll show they'll wake up at 10 and they'll get to the job at 10 30 so it's like there's like a lots of underlying issues it's like you got to tell people basic stuff get to the job at nine because it starts at nine or get there a little five minutes before, ten minutes before. And it's just lots of underlying things, common sense things that you and I may not think of that we do every day that other people don't get. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, again, you are listening to Buffalo What's Next. I am here with the founder of Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative, Ahmad Nieves, and his brother Ayat, who is a Keller Williams real estate salesperson. I want to get to housing. It's an, it's an important topic for both of you. Mm-hmm. Um, educating the public about home ownership um, for you, Ahmad, started with buying a few vacant lots in the city. Mm-hmm. Can you t- talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I first went to the City of Buffalo auction two years in a row. I bought a bunch of vacant lots, uh, I think six in total to begin with. And what I... What I originally wanted to do was make a community space out of them, and I was going to do gardening and all these things on them, but uh, I eventually ended up selling these vacant lots and making a profit, and that's where, that's really where I started doing Buffalo Information Sharing Collective, is because people ask me, like, how do you go to auction and buy these properties? How do you sell them and make money? And so I was just giving them, you know, the playbook for that, but I wanted to see not not more so like developers doing this. I wanted to see everyday people making money um, and showing them that maybe you don't have like ten, twenty thousand dollars to invest, but a few thousand dollars or even less than that, you could invest and make some money and use it to improve your life. How how does that work? You know, because people talk to me about uh, investments and like I don't have any money. How can I how, <laughs> how can I make how can I make that that money work? How can I stretch that out? Okay, let's say you go to the City Buffalo auction. We haven't had one in the past two or three years, but we should have one coming up next year, hopefully. Um, and let's just say you have $1,000 to work with. Mm-hmm. You could buy a vacant lot for $500 at the City Buffalo auction. Um, and then you could, there's the um, filing fee of $325. So it, you'd walk away paying 825 for that vacant lot. Now you got to hold it for uh, for six months after you get the deed. So you hold it for six months, and then you could put it on the market after that period, and let's just say you sell it for $10,000. You have all your clothing fees, 
So let's just say you walk away with $4,000 profit. Just Let's just a modest number. You you have four times your profit from that 825 or four or five times your profit or you could do more it's just wow it's just it's just knowing how to operate with uh, certain information i mean there's a lot more that goes into it but that's the basic uh overview of it yeah i mean i don't i barely even own my shoes on my feet right now so <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe maybe uh getting into buying a, a vacant lot is 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 uh the thing to do um talk to me about filling filling a need um, in, in, uh, talking to people about, uh, land ownership and home ownership. And I, I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, since you work for Ke- uh, Keller Williams, um, the importance of, of home ownership for people who may not think that they can afford to own a home. I'm glad you mentioned that. And my brother Ahmed works for Red Door Real Estate, a wonderful company, and he does a lot of great sales over there. So according to the census, 41.5% of people in Buffalo are homeowners. 73% of those people are white. 33% of those people are black. So right now, there are a lot of great programs that we're talking about at my brother's workshop tomorrow at Burning Books on Connecticut Street from 7 to 8.30. One of those is a Sunny May $30,000 grant for first-time homebuyers. In order to qualify for this grant, you have to live on the east side for at least two years. And then you can buy anywhere, I believe, in every county. I've even heard that you can buy anywhere in New York State. And, you know, there's going to be some basic financial requirements like with any mortgage. And then if you don't qualify for that program, let's say you live on the west side or somewhere else in western New York or New York State, the Sunny May, which is, comes with a $20,000 grant, we'll also address that one tomorrow at the workshop. So that's twenty dollars or $30,000 for free. All you have to do is meet basic income requirements, have the right credit score, and then you're ready for home ownership, along with some first-time homebuyer education classes that they recommend. There's also a lot of first-time homebuyer clubs out there that'll help you with 5000 or more towards down payment and closing cost assistance. And for those out there who need financial and credit repair, there's Belmont Financial Wellness Center on Jefferson and other programs like that that will help you improve your credit for free. In your position, I, uh, um, do you work primarily on the east side? Um, tell me a little bit about the work that you do. I work wherever my buyers or sellers are, but most of my work is in the city of Buffalo. I'd say about 50% east side and then 50% west side. And I primarily work with a lot of investors. They get a bad rep. A lot of my investors are savory characters. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> But, you know, they're buying and investing in the community. But last year, I helped several homeowners, and it was really rewarding. A lot of them were buying, you know, Lockport or the suburbs, you know, just trying to get a better quality of life for their family. But I'm willing to help anybody and work with anybody. And a lot of the homes I sell are under 100000 and that means a lot more people can step into homeownership or into rental properties easily. Is there a push for maybe in your company or maybe that you've just seen over the last few years of promoting more home ownership uh, in in areas where there are a lot of renters? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of programs out there through the city of Buffalo, through nonprofits, through programs like Sunny May, and Belmont is a huge proponent of promoting home ownership. Unfortunately, a lot of people, in my experience, aren't always willing to do the work. For example, when I did the Sunny May $30,000 post on Facebook, I got over 30,000 shares organically. I'm sorry, 30,000 reach organically. And I sent everybody a generic email. And unfortunately, most of the people who you know applied for the loan didn't qualify due to the credit. And I said, if you don't qualify, here's a free resource to go to to improve your credit. From my understanding, because I did follow up with some probably 20 or 30 of them, I had a few hundred outreach, a lot of the people weren't willing to do the work or didn't want to follow through. And that's the problem. Everybody wants a quick, instant result, but they don't want to do the hard work. And it, but it also seems as if, like, once you've been branded with having bad credit, you're kind of stuck in the mud. That's not true. I have a tenant. We put him on the GPS to housing and home ownership, and part of it is he gets a rent rebate back quarterly of $150, and he does 21 credit hours each quarter. And part of it is credit rebuilding, the first time home buyers club, and other things that are going to um, work in his favor to make him more credit worthy, ready to buy a home. So 
just because you're branded right now doesn't mean you can't work towards a better future. Do you are you do you work in a lot of white spaces? How is that? Um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people in my company are white. A lot of people that I deal with are white, but I also work a lot with minority communities as well. And I suppose people are people as long as they treat you right. It's all good. We'll be back with more Buffalo What's Next after this. Do you absolutely love Masterpiece, Antiques Roadshow, PBS NewsHour, great performances, and other amazing shows on WNED-PBS? But you're not always in front of your TV when they're on. Don't miss them. You can stream the channel live wherever you are in Western New York by visiting WNED.org slash live or Use the WNED PBS app. Take your favorite radio stream anywhere you go with the WBFO The Bridge app. Search the playlist for that great song you just heard. I don't care about you, it's Friday, I'm in love. Use the Talk to Us feature to tell us what you think about The Bridge and press the red Join the Crew button to become a Patreon member to support College Radio for Adults. Find the WBFO The Bridge app wherever you get your apps. Hey, is this thing on? Test, test, one, two. Sounds great. Let's go. The podcast world is overflowing with more than 750,000 podcasts to choose from. But for great local podcasts, you can now go to one place, the new Amplified BTPM Pods app. Here, you can discover content produced in Western New York and Southern Ontario, our own backyard. With a wide variety of genres to choose from, there is something for everyone. Listen to the best independently produced podcast in the region anywhere, anytime. Download the free Amplify BTPM Pods app wherever you get your apps and begin exploring your local podcast community now. Buffalo is home to many historical treasures, including architectural gems. Central Terminal affected everybody. Everybody from the common man to the movie star walked this concourse. Beloved community establishments. They might get a glimpse to see Lena Horne. Uh, they might uh, see Dizzy or Miles Davis, uh, you know, Charlie Parker. And homes for local sports teams. When we talk about an institution, Memorial Auditorium was an institution. The WNED PBS original production, Remembering Western New York, Explore some of these iconic structures and their connection to people who live in the region. There was a time when Buffalo's Main Street was the focus of holiday shopping in Western New York. Watch Remembering Western New York now on YouTube. This is Buffalo What's Next, where we have conversations with the community about moving forward. To have your voice heard, press the Talk to Us button on the WBFO app and we'll work to get your questions and comments on the air. Join us on Twitter at WBFO or email us at news at WBFO.org. Together, we'll have the conversations that are needed. This is WBFO, your NPR station. You are listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White. I am here with Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative founder Ahmad Nieves and his brother Ayat, a Keller Williams real estate salesperson. You offer a lot of presentations through uh, your Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative. Um, Something that piqued my interest was um, the tiny house revolution. Where can folks find more information about uh, Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative? And then can you tell me a little more about this tiny house revolution? Okay, so the thing I love about this group is that I don't have all the information, but I know someone who does. So, like, for the tiny house workshop, what I do is I reach out to other people. So um, my friends Cam and Emma, they they were living in a tiny house for a few years. So they originally did that workshop, and then I would just reach out to other people. So if people are interested in seeing the workshop about about tiny houses, I'll reach out to my network, and I'll use them for the expertise. And you could always you could always follow us on Facebook, Buffalo Information Sharing Collective, um, and you could see what workshops we have coming up, and just yeah. And then the expo, which is tomorrow, mm-hmm. 
Um, can both of you talk a little bit more about that? I know Ayat, you had mentioned it. Yeah, so the expo that's happening tomorrow, it's from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Burning Books on Connecticut Street. Um, it's an uh, expo on grants, weatherization, lead remediation, and home inspection. So we're going to have four, four to five different presenters talking about each of these topics. Ayat is talking about grants. He could tell you about some of the grants uh, that he's going to present tomorrow. Oh, I love talking about grants. That's sure free does. money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, say that again. Grants are free money to fill a specific need or purpose. Most people in my family, like my brother and my sister, are like, shut up already. <laughs> you told them about this 20 times. I'm like, well, then just apply. But my two favorite grants are the City of Buffalo and the Erie County Lead Grant. According to the census, 90% of the homes were built before 1978. That means 90% of Buffalo homes may have lead in them. Lead has hazardous effects on children and pregnant women. So if you qualify by meeting very, you know, very fair income guidelines, you can apl- and you have children under six are living in a home, you can apply, depending on where you're at, I think on the um, city of Buffalo, it's the west side and parts of the east side. And then the Erie County, anywhere in Erie County, they'll do up to $15,000 worth of work per unit. So if you have a two-family with kids in each, that's potentially $30,000 in work. That can mean, they usually focus on lead, but a small mm-hmm. portion is set aside for healthy homes. That means, let's say you live in a two-family and it's got chipping and peeling paint on the outside, you've got 15 windows. You can potentially have your windows replaced, your siding done, um, and maybe even some new carpets or some new flooring in part of the house. And that's covered. If With the city of Buffalo, they'll put a small lien on your home. With the, uh, Erie County, they'll put the landlord pays between 1% and 12% of the total project cost. So you can get $30,000 worth of work done for $3,600. And the best part for tenants, you get a free hotel stay while you're there. Wow. Yeah, free hotel, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's to complain about? <laughs> and then the landlord cannot raise the rent for the repairs that are done. So you get pretty much rent protection, an upgraded home, and a free hotel stay for 15 minutes worth of paperwork. And the process takes about three to six months from start to finish. Is this something you do annually or is this the first of its kind? The lead grant is, um, so the city of Buffalo applied for it. They got grant funding, I believe, about two years ago. Prior to that, they hadn't applied in about two year, uh, 20 years. The Erie County lead grant's been around for decades. It's a great program. We've done about 30 of them. I promote them all the time. And it's really easy to apply for. In fact, they need contractors. So if you're a contractor, you're supposed to be lead certified. You can get a job through, uh, potentially through the city of Buffalo or Erie County to become a lead certified contractor and do jobs like this. Oh, there you go. It's a ton of information. Um, We have about eight minutes left, and there's something I wanted to ask both of you. We try to ask all of our guests, and it's just, you know, an open-ended question. Um, And Amon, I want to ask you first, uh, what does Buffalo need? In your opinion, when I ask you that question, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, What comes to my mind is what my group's all about is information. We just need good quality information being put out in the public and just educating people and letting them make the best decisions. I, I believe a lot of the problems are people do not have good information to operate off of. And if we all have great information to operate out of, I feel like people will do better decisions Make better decisions overall. That's that's where I'm focused. Good information, good quality information, just out there. How can you use Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative to uh, build build out that build out that vision? Uh, just continuing doing what I do is like um, I do all these free workshops. I have a good reach. I have a good network, and I I do these workshops, and people come. I give this information. They're free to use this information how they want, but I envision them using it in good, positive ways. Um, an example of this, like sharing good information, is, and this is relevant now because I'm, as a real estate agent, I'm, I work in rentals, and I, I did my first rental listing for someone, and people are getting scammed left and right. So what happened was I put up this listing online, and uh, people are looking for good quality apartments and housing. So what happened is uh, some individual scammed my listing. Like they, they copied and pasted it. Oh. They're pretending to be the landlord 
and they're having people apply for this apartment. But what they're doing is before the people even see the apartment, they're charging them a $55, app, $55 application fee. So my mind is, my mind, I'm thinking, who would pay $55 to see apartment or to apply for apartment they haven't seen? I'm thinking, you know, use your brain. But it's not, no, it, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, it's common sense to me, but it, maybe it's not common to them. So this guy is getting people left and right. So first of all, don't pay don't pay a $55 application fee for uh, to see an, just to apply for an apartment that you haven't seen yet. And second of all, the application fee is $20. So if somebody's hitting you with $55 or some absurd number like that, that should be your first red flag. Your second red flag is to pay to apply for an apartment you haven't seen yet. So I feel bad for the people who are getting scammed by this, but at the same time, you know, you know, just think. So how, how do you how do you um how do you catch these how do how do how do people get caught in these scams or how do you the scammers how do you is there like a policy or are there people that that go after these scammers the scammers they just the opportunists they, they they see areas where they could you know just get involved and scam people is like so they know a lot of people looking for an apartment or to move so people are so excited about moving and finding a, a new apartment or or whatever so that when they when they see these scammers and they, they see these scams you know their guards are down they're not thinking about that it's like all right fifty five dollars great and I could see the house after I pay they're not think so a lot of people aren't thinking about they're not thinking logically they're thinking emotionally mm -hmm. so that's that's how these scammers you know get people and they uh what does Buffalo need? Education. We need education. I believe in the Buffalo Public Schools. Uh, I know people in the school board. I know a lot of substitute teachers and teachers. And, that, you know, these kids need education. For example, a lot of people don't know that renters, um, homeowners have about 40 times more net worth than the average renter. The average renter has about $6,000 net worth. The average homeowner between the home and other assets they own is about 240000 we're covering that at the workshop tomorrow, that, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if you're educated, like about the Ooh. rentals. Say that again, please. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So those people who got scammed out of the $55, and there's people who get scammed out of $800 by sending money. This I got my uh, rental ad cloned a few months ago. Send me the $800 and I'll send you the keys. It was an $1,800 house, and they... Literally copied and pasted, just like they did to him. Wow. Except some people went ahead and called me first and saved themselves the 800 bucks. Oh, my God, I get this whole house for $800? It's too good to be true. If you look up the address, my Zillow ad will pop up, and my contact information will pop up. Thank God the scammer was dumb. <laughs> They're getting better. Um, and they cloned it, and they, they didn't erase my information. But it's... That's happened to me a handful of times. It happens when people put up listings for sale. People will clone it and copy it. But an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if you're saying, look, I want to escape my situation, it starts with education. We live in the information golden age. You can Google most topics, but most people won't. Buffalo has a plethora of agencies. Housing Opportunities Made Equal is one of them. They help landlords and tenants. Believe you me, I was surprised with the landlord part. Um, but... They're a great organization. They help landlords and tenants resolve rental disputes and learn your housing rights and responsibilities. We should be teaching the children in the from elementary school and up about building generational wealth, how to do a basic budget, because to us it's common sense. But to a mm -hmm. lot of people, they don't have this at home. Their parents may not have known it, and they're generation zero. So they're kind of starting off at the bottom, and they have to work their way up. And like my brother says, people are out there information hoarding and not saying, hey, kid, you should do this, or here's how you build a budget, or here's how you invest in real estate, or here's how you start a business. So we should be doing more education. You're listening to Buffalo What's Next. I'm Thomas O'Neill White, and I am here with Buffalo Information Sharing Cooperative founder Ahmad Nieves and his brother Ayat A. Keller Williams, real estate salesperson. Uh, I want to thank you guys again for being here. Thank you. And that will do it for today's Summertime Producers Picks episode. We would like to thank our guests, Rob Cornelius and Ahmed Naviz. If you missed this and you'd like to hear it again, a reminder that this program is a podcast. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts or the new Amplify BTPM app. 
and each episode is also online on demand at WBFO.org. This is WBFO, WBFO HD1 Buffalo, WOL and Olean, and WBJ Jamestown, your NPR station. This is Charles Gilbert. Thanks for listening.